Hello, and welcome to World Domination's Disney Villain Draft. We hope you enjoyed this little diversion before we start Season 4. In any case, it will finally resolve who won Seasons 1 and 2, Emma or Ken. We hope you enjoy yourselves, but remember, don't take what we say too seriously. This is meant to be a comedy show after all. Enjoy! What's up, Domination? It's me, the bad boy judge, Jimon Cowell. What? Jimon Cowell? <laughs> what? I, I actually didn't come up with a pun name for this week, but uh, it's me, Emma. Hey. <laughs> hey there. And it's me, Peter Ken, because none <laughs> of my jokes never land. Oh. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, actually, I'm going to need you to explain that one to me. <laughs> well, you know, my jokes are great, so they never not land, so they so they don't never land. Oh. oh. Oh yeah, my God. say that one didn't land, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of never landing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Time to grow up. The sign of things to come tonight, Ken. That's all. They say a joke fairy dies if you have to explain it. Oh, God. <gasps> I was tricked into explaining my awesome joke. That's why it didn't land. So we have something a little bit special for everyone tonight. We're doing a Disney draft. So here to help us, we have a couple of all-star listeners. Some of our <laughs> biggest fans. Uh, can I get you to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Nick. I had Disney puns, but they all ended up really racist, so I'm just going to steer clear of those. I've got all the background on Emma. I've known her since she was born, so hopefully we can drop some of that into today's episode. <laughs> oh, God. Ooh, so you know the making of the songbird of the century. Uh, I wasn't there when they when they created her, but... Oh. <laughs> yeah, there's, here's, a, here's a fun fact. Since we don't have a fun fact section, that Nick was my uh, next door neighbour, and my brother was actually or his parents were babysitting my brother when I was born. Was he one of the Power Rangers or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? We were always the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Emma was Shredder. <laughs> oh! <laughs> what? You said you were a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. I was always the Yellow Power Ranger or Shredder. Oh. All right, we got, we're going to move on to the next guest. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, well, I'd like to welcome you all to this episode of World Damianation. I'm your host, Damianator. Yeah, well done. <laughs> yeah! Uh, hey, guys. <laughs> Glad to be on the show. Avid listener, number one fan. I think uh, I've been told by all three of you on separate occasions. So, um, <laughs> good to finally be guest starring. Long-time listener, first-time caller, yeah? Long-time <laughs> listener, first-time caller. Yep. <laughs> And Deanna. Hi, um, I'm a lady and a tramp. My name is Deanna, and I am, yeah, <laughs> long-time fan and Disney enthusiast. And she's coming at us from old London town. Woo! You! Okay, so how are we today? <laughs> <laughs> so that good, uh, huh? <laughs> I'm going fantastic. I was uh, just uh, settling back into life, getting, uh, getting used to pubs and everything opening up, and then all of a sudden transmitting out of Melbourne. Uh, I'm back in lockdown down as of tomorrow. Woo. Yeah, so if any of you want to insult Damien tonight, don't worry, he can't come after you for six weeks. <laughs> I am going to go absolutely nuts for at lunch tomorrow. Pub lunch is my last attempt before everything gets shut down again. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, that seems like a good idea. Have you got another uh, thousand piece puzzle to keep you going through these next six weeks, Damien? <laughs> i got one and a half still to do. Yep, that's right. Cool, cool, cool. Living the dream. In, in fact, the the one that I've got left is a is a Disney puzzle, so um, very Ooh. very relevant to today's topic. Ah, you were supposed to do it before. It's not going to get you any points. Ah, <laughs> uh, we'll see. <laughs> so, how are you, Nick? I'm always good, always good. I'm just excited to be here with all of you and to beat Ken down. Frankly, I'm really excited for that. Mm-hmm. Whoa, whoa! Ooh. Leave the dirty talk for later. Ooh, hold no. on, not if I got anything I like to say this about smack that. talk. <laughs> smack talk. It's great. I'm confident. <laughs> oh man, I've definitely made the most out of it over the last like what three weeks, three four weeks or something. But yeah, um, but that's why yeah. that's why Victoria is in lockdown. <laughs> you know what? And we'll test that theory with the UK over the next month. But um, yeah, no, we got the news today this afternoon, and I think our entire office just pretty much shut down at that point, and we went and had a few for quiet beers in the out in the break room. <laughs> I'm surprised you already weren't in the break room with a few beers anyway. Yeah. It didn't take long from the announcement, I'll be honest. <laughs> I went up and saw my mum a couple of weekends ago. Uh, she looked at me and went, oh, I see you've also put on the COVID-19 kilos. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, thanks, mum. <laughs> oh, hectic. I know, right? Super sad. Yeah, I'm sort of um, di- dipping my uh, little toe back into those dating apps, just giving myself time to get back to the gym, but we'll see what the next couple of weeks look like with that. I don't even know if they'll shut Mate, down again. You've been in lockdown for six weeks. Don't dip your toe in, just jump straight in. 
<laughs> the old ISO body. See, whereas I have lost 12 and a half kilos and it's not helping at all. <laughs> Way to brag about it. Yeah, look, it's a humble, hashtag humble brag. Listeners, Emma looks amazing. Thanks, Ken. <laughs> okay, so maybe we should do a quick discussion of what we're actually here to do tonight. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Wait, but what about the love life of Emma update for everyone? Oh, yeah, what's going on there? Uh, absolutely nothing. Uh, sure, that's a quick update. <laughs> that was a quick update. Uh, I think it's very... Because uh, 12 and a half kilos down since uh, Valentine's Day, so I think that kind of... <laughs> <laughs> is, wait, is that when you started? Yeah, my diet started oh. on Valentine's Day. <laughs> God, that's depressing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> If you're interested, call the number down below. <laughs> Ken, don't put my number on the internet. 555, 555, 555. <laughs> Emma's number is four. <laughs> <laughs> She's lost 12 kilos. Give her a break. Yeah. She's got to be a five now. Oh. oh. <laughs> Nick, we're on the same team. We're on Sorry, the same team. I was there for the team. taking. I couldn't help it. <laughs> At least a six. All right. So, today we're here to do a Disney villain draft. uh, And this is to decide who won season two of World Domination. Even though I know what you're saying. We're at the end of season three. Shut up. (laughs) <laughs> we're getting, we've got old old um, old scores to settle. But it's all, it's also no it's season one and season two. Oh, season one and season two. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So Ooh. the stakes are high, Jim. This is why we have guests on tonight. So we're going to split up into three groups. There's going to be Team Emma and Team Ken. Whoa, whoa! Why did you say Team Emma first? Alphabetical. Alphabetical. Oh, okay. We're better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Nick is on Emma's team And Damien is on Ken's team And then we also have a review panel Which is going to be made up of Dee and myself So the way this is going to work is We have decided a list of villains I will put a link to an, that list in the show notes uh, What we're going to do now is Team Emma and Team Ken are going to break off into their own recordings They're going to talk about what villains they'd like to pick And in what order And then we're going to come back in a, I don't know Five minutes or so. I think you guys have had some opportunity to have discussion. But we'll come back when you guys are ready and then we'll do the actual draft. Sound cool? Sounds cool. Sounds cool. Oh, wait. Crap. Where's my Disney draft Excel spreadsheet? You guys have Excel spreadsheets? Oh, shit. I sent it to you. (laughs) 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 You did? (laughs) When? No, I I haven't sent Nick anything. Emma hasn't sent me shit. When did you send me spreadsheets? (laughs) I love that Ken's like sent you a spreadsheet that's probably got all this information and whereas today you're like, oh, can somebody send me the list of villains? <laughs> well, you see, what happened is that I, I asked Ken what our strategy is and so he sent it across to me saying, whoops, I haven't sent this to you yet. And then, you know, I just, oh shit, you got lots of information in here, Ken. Hang on. Can we uh, delay for half an hour so I can catch up? (laughs) You guys will have 10 minutes to chat before we have to make the actual picks because I thought this might happen. Were you just coming into this to just absolutely wing it? This is great. Wild card, baby. No, no, I wasn't doing that. He sent me a message earlier saying he expects me to lead this. So I was like, oh, okay. I guess he's busy and didn't look at the spreadsheet. Oh, yeah, no, Ken is definitely leading this. Also, just a, a PSA that I'm one and a half gin and tonics down so this should be interesting cool i'm sorry nick in advance maybe it'll make me stronger i don't think you've been drinking enough you should drink more are we allowed to swear on this podcast fuck oath you are (laughs) have you fucking heard me talking on here (laughs) i tried bleeping on this podcast for exactly one episode before i gave up (laughs) yeah but that was stuff about no 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 in the in our first episode i i bleeped swears as well oh did you and then i tried to manually do it when he refused to do it again also you know i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to bleep that mention damien (laughs) what yeah i can't mention (laughs) no you can't you can't talk about on the internet well you've got three of your biggest listeners on tonight so sure do we love you sure do (laughs) i think they're three only listeners let's be real (laughs) no they've got (laughs) listeners in cambodia or something haven't they yeah, there's somebody or in somebody in Canada Brazil or something or too. Give me a sec. I can tell like that, you where but... our I can tell you where our smallest minority of listeners come. Give me two sex. We're international, Nick. I don't know if you know this about us, but we're pretty popular. I do use VPNs a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that could don't be. Don't tell us that. 
<laughs> All right. Apparently, the smallest minority of our listeners are from France. I Boy, can sure. hand on heart say I've never VPN to France, so not me. Have any of you VPN to Egypt, Pakistan, Romania, Japan, Ghana, Curacao, Russia, the Netherlands, Norway, Saudi Arabia, Canada, Costa Rica, Ireland, Germany, and then the, the other fuck? two you might have. <laughs> at, at least two of them. That's at least epic. two of them. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we're, we're, we're pretty popular. I suddenly feel really good about myself. <laughs> I don't know Some why. Some weird guy in Russia <laughs> listening to us. <laughs> All right. Any questions before we go? Uh, I've just got one question. Yep. Where are my flapjacks? <laughs> <laughs> Where are my flapjacks? Once you guys have done the draft, then we're going to break off again into separate recordings. Cool. And you guys we're, are going to discuss how you're going to use your team of four villains to take over the world. And then you're going to pitch your ideas to D and I. Sound good? In a big group chat. In a big group So that call. the other team Ooh. can also ask questions. So are they just picking four people from the list? No, it's not like one person gets one villain. Yeah, so there'll be leftovers. Yeah, there will be leftovers. But you guys pick first and then so like you have to adapt your plan based on which villains. That's right. Okay, cool. Good. So we'll each have four and there'll be a couple of leftovers. After. Yeah, so we've decided to not use the villains that we used in the series proper. A, to keep it a little bit more interesting, and B, because a lot of those are like super overpowered characters who kind of ruin things. Yes, these are all underpowered. You should not choose anybody. Yeah, these, these are all <laughs> the B-tier villains. You should exclusively cast Gaston in your list. <laughs> <laughs> I only pick him once. Hi everyone, Future Jim here. Sorry to interrupt. I'll be popping in like this throughout the episode just to give a little bit of context on what's happening because past Jim was lazy and didn't do a lot of that at the time. Right now we're off to hear Jim and Dee talk about what they think might happen. Enjoy. Hey Dee. Hey Jim, how are you going? Good, how are you? Yeah, this is fun. <laughs> yeah, I thought we might take this opportunity while now that they've gone to kind of talk about what you would do if you were in their position. So who, like, who would your first pick be on the villain list? So I think there's two total options here, right? Mm -hmm. If you decide to plan a certain way, there is a uh, full on ocean attack here. So like you go Davy Jones, he's like the king of the whole ocean. You've got mm -hmm. Captain Hook, who's like a pirate on the sea. You've mm -hmm. got Ursula, who is like a sea witch. Mm -hmm. And then you could probably just throw in somebody else really badass, like Maleficent, who's like- the, Gaston. Like, yeah, as or the Gaston, muscle. because as if Gaston is not a sailor. Like yeah. he's got those sailor's arms. You know he's going to be good. Or like you've got the other classic one, which is like you go with the Mistress of Evil, you go Maleficent, you go like for the ones with the most power. So Maleficent, probably Davy Jones, but he is- restricted to the ocean. He can step foot on ocean. What is it? Once every 10 years? Once every 10 years. Like, are we are we, are we saying that this is the once every 10 years? Because I'm totally cool with that. The rule that we said was that you couldn't use any of their henchmen or anything, but you could assume that they're at the peak of their power. You can't use any of their henchmen? Well, that's unfair because, like, Davy Jones basically has an army, whereas the hunter basically has a gun. Some of them are literally, like, some of them are literally incompetent without having any henchmen. What we though. said is, like, <laughs> they don't automatically come with their henchmen. You can make it part of your plan plan to recruit henchmen. Mm. Mm -hmm. But okay, okay. that like adds another level of complexity onto the plan. Then you've got to have someone charismatic like Gaston to yeah. lead these people. Gaston is a man of the people. People will follow him. You need a figurehead to be able to enact world domination. And you don't think old squid face is that? <laughs> no, like he's tragic. He's he's like a sappy figure. Like he's he's sad because his the love of his life abandoned him, like because the ocean got turned into a woman. Yeah, basically, like he's he's sad. You don't want to deal with that. It's funny that it's normally the other way around. <laughs> you think there's like quite a few kind of like good figureheads in terms of like leaders. Like all the women in this list are like insanely narcissistic. Like you've got Cruella who wants to like make a coat. Yes, you've which is Maleficent. incredibly de dedicated to that goal. She's incredibly dedicated, and then you've got someone like Maleficent who like got. FOMO from missing because she wasn't invited to a party and therefore cursed the entire kingdom. Would like, you? You've got some re... <laughs> yes, of course. I... <laughs> She's she's my pick in terms of um person I most relate to. Mm -hmm. And then you've got Evil Queen who wants to kill Snow White because she can't stand that someone might be prettier than her. Mm. There's, there's a lot of good options. Who's who's the worst pick? Because I have a clear answer for this one. <laughs> okay. Um is is it Zerg because he's, he's a toy? Because he's a toy. I 
was like, maybe like, because in the TV show, he's like, you know, he's he's a villain on some spaceships. But like in this, he's got like a fake toy laser. Yeah, although um, he, you know, he is dedicated, you know, it's kind of semi-immortal. A few of these characters are immortal, like Davy Jones and who else is immortal? Mother Gothel, kind of. Yeah, but if you cut off Rapunzel's head, then she's yeah. dead. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Ursula is maybe immortal? Ursula's maybe immortal. She's got a lot of power, but she's also, like, stuck to the bottom of the sea again. Yeah. That's why I'm thinking, like, a full-on ocean assault could actually yeah. really work in people's favours here. Like a third act of Aquaman assault. Yeah, absolutely. Hell yeah. Just, like, go hell and what, like, most most of the world is ocean. Most of the world is ocean. You lean into that. Um, <laughs> and then who else we got? We got Randall from Monsters, Inc. He's a bit of a... Yeah, he's like, he's a chameleon. The thing with Randall is that he gives you access to basically anywhere in the world. So you could put you could put one of the doors underwater. Oh, damn. Damn, that's good thinking. And then the door to the president's <gasps> office. Yeah. Or whatever. So he's... It's it's what he has to offer. Him him is a, like a character. He's a flunky. He yeah. like... He's not even the top dog. And who else we got? The hunter. The hunter from Bambi, who you literally never see. In the entire yeah. movie, he's just like a symbol for man. With he's got guns. Was it you that was talking to me about this last night? That was saying like you don't even see him, but he's the most hated villain. Well, he's not a shit villain. He's just he's a villain within the confines of you know the story that he's in. Like because yeah. it's about the wilds and the forests and stuff. And obviously you've got men who was hunting the deer because you know they're good meats or good trophies or whatever they are. Oh, yeah. um, and so you literally you literally don't even see him. And at the end they pretty much seem to set fire to the entire forest. So like it's it's just the danger of man is the real message there. Yeah. But is he is he a good villain? Mm, no. I mean, he like I've I've said this before off the podcast, but he does have the incredible power of gun, which is not to be yeah. shirked at. Let me say, Gaston also has the power of gun. That is true, and he also has the power of muscle and charisma. I don't believe anyone else, to my knowledge, uses. Actually, they do have some guns in a uh, Peter Pan, Captain. That's Hook. true. Captain Hook has access to uh, some swords. Uh, he's got some. He's got some weapons. Yeah, but I, I will say with Gaston and Captain Hook, that the guns are not as advanced as the hunter's gun. Yeah, well, you assume. I think yeah. the hunter's gun is just a shotgun. Yeah, but a shotgun is a lot quicker to reload than whatever gun Gaston that is and true. Captain Hook have. Yeah, but they're charming. No, they're not. Captain Hook's not charming. He is kind of. He's just got a severe vendetta against Peter Pan. What was the thing I saw the other day where Captain Hook finds out that they actually call him Captain Hook and he's like, oh, I guess, you know, my parents are dead as well. Why don't you call me Captain Dead Parents? Because none of none of the crew actually call him Captain Hook. They call him Captain. It's Peter hmm. Pan who labels him Captain Hook. Hmm. So Peter Pan is just a dickhead. He's a dickhead. Well, he, he's very childish. Yeah, well, yeah, he's a he's a child forever. Mm. That's gotta that's gotta have some severe repercussions on your like mental health. I really think they're going to go with Davy Jones first. I think for some reason he's the pick because mm-hmm. he's he's got, he's got power. He's got the power. Yeah. He's got the he's got the Kraken. Either that or Randall. I think those Ooh. are the two to to watch out for because they're looking at the larger the larger scale of where Randall can take them. Yeah, and, then and where Davy the Jones can take them. I think it's good. I'm I'm looking forward to because like you said other than maybe Davy Jones a lot of these villains are kind of on the weaker scale so I'm yeah. really really looking at the creativity here about yeah. how they're going to kind of make this a full scale assault because some of them like some of them are so small scale <laughs> yeah I'm also really excited just to see how this draft goes out and how the um you know what happens if somebody picks the wrong thing or not not the wrong thing if somebody picks the um Pick something that the other team wanted. Do we have any more twists that we can throw at them? Because no, I'm thinking think they good. need something. Damn. I want anyway. a, something a little bit more spicy. Okay, let's see who Team Emma is looking to draft. Hello. Hello. Alrighty. So we're we're recording and I believe we need to discuss who we want. I know <laughs> I we kinda just wanted to sit here and talk smack. <laughs> Just we totally talk can. Shit, talk shit about Ken totally. for nine minutes and 20 seconds. <laughs> we, we totally uh, can do that too, because when he hears it, he'll be like, oh, God. I don't know that I've ever met him, but he's just he just seems like such a sad human. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Ken. He oh. was um, he was in my homeroom at school, and which was also James's homeroom, so James knew him as well. Oh, mad! Yeah, um, <laughs> I imagine right. James just bullied the shit out of him. <laughs> Jim's yeah. gonna listen to this and be like, "Nick's a dick." Yep. <laughs> Nick, is, Nick a is a dick. Everybody should. Everybody should know this. 
Yeah, yeah, I know. I've known you, what, like nearly bloody 29 years. Nick is a yeah, dick. Yeah, 100%. Nick is a dick. But he's a loyal dick, so it makes him lovable. <laughs> you are. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> just get some shellfish out. It's fine. Get some I'm consistent. Out. <laughs> Can you please not give me anaphylaxis? <laughs> Just poison me with prawns. <laughs> You're a grub. I'll, uh, I'll at least wait until after after this is done. Until after we've won. Got so it. Until after we've won, because we are going to win. Uh, 100%. There's 11, 11 villains. So, uh, look, we got who we got? Gaston, Ursula, yep. Maleficent, Evil Queen, Captain Hook, Mother Gothel, the Hunter <laughs> from B&B. I really want to draft the Hunter, I'm not going to lie. Look, I also do. <laughs> Randall from Monsters Inc., Zerg, Cruella Deville, and Davy Jones. So I feel like, and I know obviously we've talked about this before, but yeah. I think we want Randall, and I feel like Randall's our top pick. I think Randall is the number one. He's he's got the only unique power in here that I'm interested in. I think. Yeah, he's got access to the doors. He can mm-hmm. camouflage. Yeah, and he is lonely. <laughs> So I feel like you get any other kind of um, dominant personality and he is, he's going to follow them. Yeah. For yeah. that sense of, so I feel like Randall is definitely number one. I'm a bit worried about this um, befitting of the characters though. So do the actions of each of the characters in the team match what they would do in their respective movie? Mm-hmm. So I think it's, yeah. And plus his handicaps. Like, what flaws he actually has. I haven't thought about it all. Yeah. So, I guess if you think about Randall, obviously, he was bullied and he was left out. Yeah. Which is why he was. So, I feel like... (laughs) We're just going to make him feel included. (laughs) We're just going to make him feel included. And that he's important. And I feel like that's the number one thing. You're one of our friends if you're taking over the world with us. (laughs) You know, but it's... I feel like... Like, if you get a... um, Who was out? We were also looking at the evil queen, right? Yeah. That, you know, you get her being like, oh, Oh, man, like nobody's ever really, you know, and as well, she's got her hypnotizing powers too. So she can kind of yeah. talk to him and be like, hey, look, like they've never appreciated you. That's true. So I feel like very easily and I think, I feel, yeah, so, but I feel like he's number one. So he's got the unique power, yep. but like our second draft is actually going to hold him to account. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So I feel like, but I mean, if we don't get Randall. Okay. So if they draft first and they take Randall. Yeah. I, that would blow my mind because I don't <laughs> think anyone would think like this. <laughs> no, you'd go for the powerful Randall? guys, right? Yeah, surely they're going to yeah. go Maleficent. Surely. All right. So if we go, if we go our top picks, so we've yeah. got one is Randall, two is yeah. the Evil Queen. We think. Yeah, I write Evil Queen over Maleficent just because she's got less weaknesses. She can control armies. Like she's proven yep. that she can run kingdoms. Like. She's mad. Yep. Whereas Maleficent is a little bit like she's got. This, they've got similar powers, but Maleficent is a little bit more um, hates men. <laughs> kind of. <just laughs> like, she's probably a little bit more of a. I want to protect my own little area as opposed to Evil Queen. I feel like is a little bit more. Yeah. I she's going to stay in her region, not yep. do a whole lot, and just kill anyone that comes in. Basically. Yep. Okay. Which could be handy, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, um, but I feel like if we don't get the Evil Queen, I feel like Maleficent is the next one, so that we've still got that power. But which power? The witch power. Because I don't know yeah. what Mother Gothel has compared to them, but I feel like she's even um, more... I don't think Mother Gothel is a particularly good witch. I think her power all came from just stealing some hair. child's hair. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that golden hair. Um, all right, cool. So we got Randall and the Evil Queen, but also we could do Maleficent yep. as, um, as the next one. Look, if we don't get... Randall, we're kind of like we're not screwed, but it's definitely not going to help. Okay, well, look, we've got to we've got to think we've got to actually play this out a little bit. I think because if we don't get okay, let's just say they draft first, right? Mm-hmm. And they pick up Maleficent, and we pick up Randall, and then they pick up the Evil Queen. Yep. What the fuck are we going to do? <laughs> <laughs> um, look, then we'll just pick like fucking Cruella. Like then, uh, you know what? Then we'll pick bloody Cruella Deville and um, Gaston, and then it's just Cruella Deville uses her bloody Dalmatians and creates fantastic coats for Gaston, and then he just appears in people's bedrooms. <laughs> do, do we get Cruella Deville's financial wealth? I assume so, because that could be useful. We, I reckon if they get both the equal, co- if they get the 100%. witches, we're if taking Cruella. Her- yeah, and then we'll say, and then Gaston, because, you know, so essentially our plan was that we would use Gaston as the face of taking over the world. So you get Cruella Deville to, like, 
<laughs> and if you don't like it, you just get locked in Cruella de Vil's mansion. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. And the, but you got a hundred one bloody puppies to play with. But yeah, the fair. um, and then Cruella, she just like dresses them really good because she's into fashion and shit. And then like with 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 fucking Randall, he just appears in people's bedrooms and is like, "Come join us." And you'd be like, "Ooh, damn! There's an attractive Essential. man at the end of my bed." Sure. <laughs> Just one per- one person at a time. <laughs> Look, it's a long plan. It's a it's, it's an end game. It's, it's not a short play. It's not a short play. All right. Okay. So we got Randall, Evil Queen, yeah. and then you. What do you think? If we get Randall, the Evil Queen, and Gaston, I think this is in the bag. That's that's yeah. us done. Okay, so number three is Gaston. Yeah. And number four would be, who were we thinking? I think originally we had chatted about, um, like, Davy Jones so that we've got the pirate ship so that they can be out at sea so it's less likely to be found. Yeah. Rather I guess than an evil I, lair, but I don't know. There's probably a couple of ways to think about this. So we either take the piss, because we've got this in the bag, and we draft someone like the Hunter or Zerg, who is just fucking oh, useless, or we take Davy Jones just so that they can't have him. Because what what's Davy's powers? He's like, he's just bloody in the <laughs> so ocean. So Davy's, well, I mean, yeah, in the ocean is basically fucking unbeatable because he can travel anywhere he wants underwater. But oh, yeah, his too. trick is that he can like teleport onto like random boats and crap like that, but he can enslave people to his ship. I think that's that's the that's the kicker. And can he be captain of any ship or is it only the, well, I've forgotten the name of his ship. Is it only that ship? <laughs> I don't know that there's any rules because if if you see him appear on your ship and he's like I'm going to be captain, you're not going to say no. I'm are you? captain now. No, but I'm just thinking maybe we need Davy Jones because then he gets he gets a cruise ship and then we can we can capture more people. I mean, he can capture anyone on a cruise ship. So if you wanted to take a cruise ship, he could just appear on said cruise ship, take everyone useless, and just give it to us. And I assume he could he can be captain of more than one ship as well. So he can just like fucking appear on any cruise ship around. <laughs> Oh, man. So, because there's not technically maybe bedroom doors, maybe he just appears and takes over that way. And then that way we can surround. Oh, we can get the... See, I feel like Davy Jones is a good one because then we can get the like the navies and the militaries across the world and surround oh, everybody. So, those point. people who don't want to follow Gaston, like maybe they're not into biceps. They're- just a show of military force. Yeah. You've so- got a really good freaking point there. But Zerg? <laughs> <laughs> But on the other hand, have, or the or the hunter, because maybe the hunter, because he's definitely a um a, a Trump supporter, so maybe he'll get all those those Trump supporters oh, on side too. Oh my really god, quickly. that is okay. Think about this. No, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's backtrack this a little bit. So we've got Gaston as like the pretty face to us. Yeah. What if we took the hunter to run against us? So he Ooh. was the opposing political party. Oh. <laughs> so you have one of two people to choose. You can go with Gaston the Handsome or the person that killed Bambi's mum. <laughs> oh, fuck. That sounds great. I'm, I'm oh, all over man. that. I love that. I'm definitely all over that as well. <laughs> oh, man. So, okay, if we look at the categories of the rate, the grading rubric that we've got here, simplicity, yeah. how easy would it be to follow through with the plan? I feel like that'd be pretty Come easy. On. Yeah. Befitting to the characters, 100%. Um, yeah, for sure. Showmanship, 100%. <laughs> Is it creative? Yeah, that's that's a fucking creative plan. We're going to bloody make Gaston run for... Yeah, and how well do you deal with the flaws in your team? Yeah, okay, cool. And I think what flaws? if we had... Well, I think the flaw there would be... And obviously, we can chat about this in the next pit when we actually have our people. But I think the flaw would be saying, you know, Randall and him having a, a conscience, <laughs> um, uh, but using the yeah. evil queen to kind of hypnotize him a little bit to, yeah. And, yeah and making yeah, him feel important reasonable. and things like that. So we've taken that into consideration, but yeah. everybody else, I feel like Gaston wouldn't feel, I feel like we've got a good mix there because Davy Jones, like Gaston wouldn't, the only other male there in that top four that we've got, unless we mm. go with the hunter. <laughs> I don't know. We can go with... I feel like we'll just do a whim. Maybe we'll do a whim as to yeah. Davy Jones or um, The Hunter because they may think that we're going for Davy Jones because of your bloody ploy <laughs> from earlier. So, it was a good ploy. I think that worked so well. <laughs> They're definitely thinking about it. So perhaps, you know, they may think that we're going for Davy Jones, but I think if we've got Gaston and Davy Jones, Gaston's not going to be intimidated by Davy Jones because he's yeah. not attractive. 
Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's fair. And whereas Ran- he's not going to be intimidated by Randall or and the Evil Queen either. So yeah. he'll be fine because – and he's the face of it and that's all that he would really want anyway. Evil Queen and Randall are a little bit more introverted and hide yeah. in the shadows and David Jones is whatever. So I feel like we'd be all right there. But we want those top three. I think we'd have a little bit more of a difficult time if we got Maleficent over the Evil Queen. Yeah, I think so. Oh, I think we're being called back. I think we're being summoned. Oh, okay. We're out of time. Right. But I think we've got a good plan. Yep, let's do it. Cool. All we right. We can chat about it in there. All right, bye. And let's see who Team Ken wanted to draft. Hey, Luke. Hello. Cool. All right. So, we definitely want Malif- Maleficent as yep. our first choice. I'd say so. Yeah, yeah. She's the most powerful out of that list and most versatile. If that goes, do we want Ursula or Davy Jones as our first choice? Hmm, I'd say, oh, if that goes, I'd say go Ursula first, because Davy Jones is limited to the sea unless we can get Ursula to do something about it. Correct. Hmm. And um, as far as, like, plans go, Ursula is able to make, like, those contracts to do, like, magical things. So yep. she can do something cool there. Mm-hmm. So Maleficent. Yep. And then Ursula. Mm-hmm. And then Davy Jones. And then Davy Jones. So we won't get all three of those, but hopefully we get two of them. Yeah. So even if we lose out on if we lose out on Maleficent, then Ursula and Davy Jones will be okay. If they end up choosing first, they'll go Maleficent. We go Ursula. They might take Davy Jones on their next mm-hmm. one. Yeah. So mm, good point. From that point, after there, who do we want? Because mm-hmm. as a captain, you said either Gaston or Captain Cook. We we want Gaston. Yeah. I'd say go Captain. Cook cook if we have ursula because they can pair up better that's a good point and i like that and also davy jones there's a good partnership there as well Mm. all right so that's that's our ringer there captain cook over gaston Mm -hmm. in the case if we couldn't get maleficent or davy jones yeah because if we could get if we could get like maleficent and davy jones like i'd say gaston would be like a a better like leader than captain cook in the general sense Mm-hmm. Also pleases D as well, so that's, that's another what extra I was point. Thinking. <laughs> yeah. All right. So as far as like a, like power and ability goes, who's our yeah. next from there? Are you thinking sort of Evil Queen? So um, the thing is, the problem with Evil Queen is in the movie she's been using her powers very in a very petty way. Like she hasn't really done anything successfully in that movie. Yep. She, and yeah. she sort of just gets like fucked. She'll just she just gets killed by the dwarves and by um the fallen boulder anyway. Yeah, exactly. So I'm like, I don't really like her in terms of like, you know, she she didn't seem very strategic. She didn't seem very smart. Nor did she use her powers very well. And then we've got, I guess we have Ra- Randall, uh, Randall from Monsters Inc. Yep, the chameleon looking fella. Yeah, yeah, no, all good. Yeah, yep. So, you know, he's got invisibility, camouflage, and he's he's a monster as well. If he can travel through the doors, you know, he's got a bit of a... Uh... So there's like a teleportation power yeah. there. Mm-hmm. And he can do some espionage stuff if he can go invisible that well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like that. Mm. So then the other ones are Mother Gothel, Zerg, and Corella Deville. Corella Deville is sort of like she all she does is she just wants a coat. Yeah. She's a evil lady that just wants to make a coat out of dogs. Mm-hmm. So we cross her out. Yeah. The hunter, we cross him out. Uh, yeah, yeah. I okay. get it, yeah. We don't well, we just we did discuss this, but I I also I also think that it's a hard argument. Yep. Yeah. That it's all humans. Yeah, like the hunter is a representation of humans like of people t- you know taking over the forest and hunting for food things like that but it's also very hard to use in a plan because it's kind of like oh you know you're using a symbol and then putting unless it's giving you every human in the world mm-hmm. a human doesn't bring a whole lot to the table that yeah. any of these other people can't bring mm, agreed cool yep so zerg 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 oh zerg is a weird one because he's a mass-produced toy that can move himself when he's not around people. So there is thing, there is damage that can be done there, but, you know, based on what you can see from the movies, toys don't really do any permanent damage to anything. Agreed. Unless you count that, uh, oh, what's that kid's name in the first movie who was torturing his toys? Sid. Yeah, Sid. Like, unless you count, like, those toys, like, haunting him at the end, like... They don't really do anything in front of people. Yeah, but what are we going to scare children? What's like, how are we going to take over the world by scaring children? <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Interesting, actually. Oh, causing... causing the... It's a delayed thing. It's yeah. like inset fear in children to screw up their lives. 
Oh my god, this is so dark. But so. All good. right, let's go to Mother Gothel before we run out of time. Oh yeah, true. Mother Gothel. Mother Gothel is another like uh, evil queen kind of situation. She, she had all this like magic going on, and like, and then she decides to lock a girl up and use her to keep her going as a young woman so so yeah she's like eternal youth is really all that she does hey yeah not much there i mean you could you could do something with that her being eternally young and also using zerg's influence over evil toys to scare children Mm -hmm. do something in the long run there true true so she would be able to take over but then the other two villains might so, like they wouldn't go along with her plan oh hmm fingers crossed we get two out of ursula maleficent and davy jones yep we should get either gaston or captain cook mm-hmm. there's three yep the fourth pick who do you think um randall randall yeah randall randall's the pick fourth pick yeah if we don't get two of them if we only get one of those three mm-hmm. who's our fourth pick then the rest are pretty equally matched mother uh, i guess we should go mother gothel then mother gothel with her eternal with her long like longevity so she can mm. just keep going and you know enough time she'll eventually take over the world will she though oh good point if rapunzel t- if rapunzel dies rapunzel dies eventually yeah rapunzel how, dies how does a at the end of the day she's just a lady that's young for a long time how do you how does she take over the world i reckon um i reckon evil queen if anything else she, she can use her magic to put people to sleep presumably mm-hmm. she can do it in ways other than poisoning an apple <laughs> well in the in the original stories she used other things like a corset that was like suffocating oh wow okay uh, snow white um yeah she did, did other stuff as well yeah so sort of like taking over the fashion industry or like or like just the farming industry and using that to mass putting people to sleep something like that yeah that might work yeah let's go with her yep yeah all right that's i think that's a pretty decent basis for a plan mm, nice cool and let's do an s club seven and bring it all back to you Oh, hey, Nick. Hello. Yellow. How are we? Good, good. I just want to be clear that we spent at least the first three minutes just talking shit about Ken. Whoa. <laughs> How you How use your time you? is up to you. That's that's completely fair. We're just that. I'll point. allow it. Stop being mean to me. I might like it. I'm seriously concerned for your headspace. <laughs> Ken likes it when you call him darling. Yes, I do. I will avoid that. Like the plague. Aw, I'm sad now. I should not have told him. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So now that we're back, how was your conversation? Fruitful. Great. It's great. (laughs) Okay. So the way we're going to decide who gets to the first pick is I'm going to choose which team is number one and which team is number two. And then D is going to flip a virtual coin by a random number generator <laughs> and tell me whether it came up as one or two. I know she doesn't have a job, but did we assume she doesn't have a coin? Excuse me? <laughs> she said she doesn't have a coin. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I have many a useless coin. You know she's going to be judging you later, right? Yeah. No, not, 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 not later, Jim. The judgment has already started. <laughs> 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 okay, so I'm going to go with Team Ken is number one And yeah, Team we are. Are is number one. two You're right Oh god Alright, we ready? Yep Here we go Drum roll, please This is very exciting Alright <laughs> Alright, our number one So first one is number Team Two Team Two What is your first pick? Yes Ah, damn it Ooh Ooh. Sorry, it's the coin I wouldn't have picked them otherwise <laughs> Alright So Team Emma, who's your first villain pick? Oh my god, my heart's like beating. Okay, so as our first pick, we will pick Randall. Ooh, Whoa. So interesting. That is an interesting choice. Oh All right. Gosh. Let's see if it plays off, Carton. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Team Ken, who is your first choice? Oh, I, uh, I thought they were going to pick Davy Jones. I, I was, uh, yeah. We will choose the hunter. No, we won't. We will choose <laughs> Maleficent as it, choice one. with it. <laughs> 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 Who are you choosing? Maleficent. Maleficent. We are choosing Maleficent yes. as our uh, as our first choice. Mistress of all evil. Mm-hmm. All right, Team Emma. Who's your second choice? Nick, do you want to go next? Oh, one? Honestly, I couldn't be happier that they chose Maleficent. That is fantastic <laughs> news for us. We will take <laughs> the evil queen. Oh, that's a Ooh. strange choice. This Ooh. is going in a different direction than yeah, I thought it was going Jim. to. Yeah. Okay. 
Wow. Okay. Dee and I had a little chat about what villains we thought you guys would pick, and you guys are going in a different direction than I was, what I thought. Mm-hmm. So far, so far. I am keen to hear you, what you guys what you guys thought would be number one. Hmm. I think Nick might have thrown me off with his psyops earlier today. <laughs> 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 we spoke about that in our few minutes yeah. on the side chat as well. Well, yeah. I definitely thought that Gaston would be the number one pick, so I'm just, I'm baffled. <laughs> yeah. Okay, anyway. All right, so Team Ken, who is your number two pick? Ooh, our number two pick will be Ursula. This is so weird. Ooh. <laughs> Ursula from The Little Mermaid. Are you guys choosing the shit name on purpose? <laughs> Listen, we do. Nick, I feel like this is going to be easier than we thought. Shitness is in the eye of the beholder, thank you. We we are awarding points based on like how complex and how creative this is. So hey, yeah, it's not just overwhelming force. There is points given oh, for no, creativity. No, no, so no, we'll no, see it's how all we do. About overwhelming the force. category is literally <laughs> called simplicity. <laughs> how easy would it be? We want complexities. Oh wait, was there prior reading before this? Wait, wait, oh, Damien. <laughs> Th- there's a marking rubric. <laughs> is it? Oh god. <laughs> oh god. I- I th- Nick, I think we have it. <laughs> Team member, who is your third pick? Our third pick is Gaston. Ah, yes! <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if this was just a troll. Remember what I said a minute ago about not peeking the microphone, D? Sorry. What? <laughs> what a twist. <sighs> Oh my god what a twist. <laughs> I did not see that coming Oh my god So we'll deal with the ramifications of that later Team Ken, who is your third pick? Jim and D, our third pick is going to be Davy Jones Ooh, I honestly thought he would have been higher up on the list <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Team Emma, who is your final pick? I think we have a couple of options here. I, we could almost let Ken choose for us at this point. I think. Um, All right, that's... we'll do that. If, if, if that's an option, we will we'll take that option. The confidence. I think we'll take the hunter. Ooh. That is the option I was going to choose for you. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was just playing some some mind games there. <laughs> They worked well, Damien. We don't play games. We just win them over here. <laughs> All right. And Team Ken, what's your final choice? Our final choice uh, will be Captain Hook. Mm-hmm. Not impressed, eh? D does not sound <laughs> impressed. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us what you think. We just had a very interesting discussion while you guys were off in another call. Yep. Just just to recap, uh, Team Emma has picked Randall, the Evil Queen, Gaston, and the Hunter. And Team Ken has picked Maleficent, Ursula, Davy Jones, and Captain Hook. You're really all about yep. the ocean over there. Uh, spoilers. <laughs> it's called Synergy. <laughs> Simplicity is the synonym of synergy. <laughs> yeah, ours is so like so weird and left field. Who knows yeah. what's going on? You pick some interesting villains there. Yeah. I'm, I'm very interested to see what your plan actually is. Only time will tell. Nick and I have uh, have a few things up our sleeves. So- something about showmanship. <laughs> Definitely showmanship. There's definitely a theme going on, an ocean theme there. Um, your your team, I yeah. um, I don't no no, I've got nothing <laughs> on your team. Yeah, I don't know what your plan I, is. I don't here. know, but I'm I'm excited. I'm really excited. Yeah, me too. I don't think they have a plan. <laughs> 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 well, you're about to find out. <laughs> I'm glad I have Damien on my team because otherwise I wouldn't be uh, calling their bluff. <laughs> <laughs> they have nothing. All right. Also, if you didn't have me on your team, you'd end up with some shit team like they just got. I mean, yeah, oh. good, good point. Good point. <laughs> oh, Nick, our, Nick, our victory is going to be so, so sweet. Oh, 100%. <laughs> we'll just stand on land and see if they can come up and get us. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Oh. So... What's going to happen now is we're going to break off into separate calls again. You, I'm going to give you guys, what do you think, 15, 20 minutes, 15 minutes to discuss what your actual plans would be. Yeah, mm-hmm. yep. that's fine. Mm-hmm. Cool. Goodbye. Okay, let's see how Jim and Deanna reacted to the draft picks. Well, that was unexpected. Yeah, um, some of those answers really came from left field, especially um, Emma and Nick's choices. I am thrown in the best possible way. Yeah. I have no idea what they're going to do with that arrangement. Yep. To pick the evil queen second, that is 
She's an I watched Snow White last night, and she doesn't. She she is a witch. She does have powers, but a lot of her powers are like making the potions, reading from some books. Like she gets chased by the dwarves, and like she can't yeah. do anything. She just runs away from them because she doesn't have any like sporadic powers. I guess she also has the mirror. Whether or not they're using that, I'm not sure yeah. yet. But we'll see. Yeah, it's it's a very eclectic mix. Like as as we were talking earlier, Ken and Damien did go down that um the sea, the ocean um yeah. angle that I thought they were. Yeah, they've definitely gone an ocean angle. I didn't think they were though. Like when I, I didn't know, like their first choices were all just so bewildering to me. Yeah. I can understand Randall as the first pick. But the rest, like Evil Queen, Gaston the Hunter, it's all kinda like you know, old school dudes with guns. Yeah. <gasps> I'm I'm very what, what is their plan? I honestly have no <laughs> I, idea. I could not tell you. I'm looking, I'm looking. Like unless it, uh, no, nothing. Yeah. But yeah, I, I I agree with you. I really think Team Ken is going to go a, a C attack. Yeah. I think that's their play. They'll never see it coming. <laughs> hey. hey What do you think as well? We had three so three villains who weren't chosen, Mother Gothel. Zerg and Cruella de Vil. What do you think about those choices mm-hmm. left off? I can definitely see why Zerg wasn't chosen. <laughs> Cruella de Vil, I understand. But Mother Gothel is an interesting one to leave off, given she has, like, immortality powers. She, do- she doesn't actually have powers, though. She, like, I, I think these are the smartest ones to leave She's a witch, though, off. isn't she? No, I don't think so. Or, like, from my... I was just um, rereading about Tangled again. She pretty much just only uses immortality from um, from Rapunzel's hair and then just goes off and lives her best life. Mm. So it's a good... Um, yeah. it's, it's, it's a good mix. Like, oh, my God. Like, Nick, Nick has been um, insulting me all week about Gaston, so I was very surprised when Gaston was on their list. Does that influence your grading of their choices? Or does, do you think that will influence how you will grade them? But depending on how he uses him yeah absolutely like i said like you've got one which you've got a plan which makes sense in like the sea attack and then you've got four incredibly random choices if they manage to like put gaston at the front of that then they've won me over but (laughs) we'll we'll have to (laughs) i'm an i'm an easy woman to please we'll have to see uh how this goes yeah i've written a list of all the um flaws that the characters have in my personal opinion as well oh so um, good i was glad <laughs> i'm glad you did that i was just kind of working off that in my head i did my research <laughs> sort of <laughs> leon and i went for a walk today before i did like a little bit of research about this and i was just like running through the list of villains <laughs> and i was like so like what's this character's like just discussing it with her like what's ursula's weakness <laughs> she Urs- ursula's plans to get the trident she she wants hmm. to rule all of the seas. So she's probably yeah. like, to be honest, looking at all of these characters, Ursula is probably the only one who actually truly wants world domination. Yeah. The rest of them are very simplistic or have vendettas against the heroes. Maleficent I can I could see as a stretch. Yeah. She's taking over her world. Have you played Kingdom Hearts? I have not. It's so it's a video game that um Disney made in the early two thousands and that was based on um so like a lot of the Disney villains are the villains in this video game. And Maleficent She's the queen of the villains. Like, she is the leader. Like, mistress of all Uh. evil. She is the one who, like, rounds them all together. And she's, like, pretty much one of the truer evils in the whole game. So all the other villains Uh. actually report to her. Yeah. I suspect that might be why Damien's picked her then. Yeah. No, I... I agree with that as well. She's She's got a lot of power, but, like, I watched Sleeping Beauty again last night. She has so much power, but she, like, yeah. she just uses it to be petty, and I love that. Yeah, I love great. that for her. She, like, lives in this, like, fantastic castle on a cliff somewhere and, like, just turns up to, like, curse a little child because she wasn't invited to a party. And then she, like, um she, she captures Prince Philip and then decides to go and taunt him, like, taunt him that the love of his life is dead. So... <laughs> That's pure evil to me. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty evil. A villainous. Gaston's not a Gaston's not a villain. <laughs> yes, he is. Gaston is definitely a villain. In my opinion, Gaston is the true hero of Beauty and the Beast. Listen, he. I think. I think that says a lot about how you view gender, D. Me? Yes. <laughs> I can respect that Gaston is a character from a different time and that he amuses me. I'm not going to look at it through a uh, 21st century feminist lens because that will get complicated. I don't even think he was like appropriate for the 1990s when this came out. Like Not the 1990s. I mean like w- whatever the <laughs> before the French Revolution or something like that. Like, oh, I see. In, the, okay. in like his old town thing. No, no, no. Not in the 1990s. Um, but yeah, like people from his town get kidnapped from a beast and he he goes down to kill the beast like that's a hero 
<laughs> yeah, I suppose. I'll have all the people attacking me like, Gaston's not a hero. Actually, no, you know what? Our listenership is not that broad. I don't expect you'll get that many ads. I want, I want hate mail. I want a vicious hate mail. You know what? I'll let you know if we get any emails about it. You know, if D has offended you, email worlddompod at gmail.com. I thrive on hate. Please send me some. Or you, or you can tweet us. So Instagram and Twitter are both at worlddompodcast. How, like, how much of this time do you think they've actually spent, like, fully planning it out versus just talking crap? None. None. (laughs) I reckon they've talked crap for most of this time. Well, let's find out exactly how much crap they were talking. Let's head over to Team Ken. Can you believe the team they chose? Unbelievable. What What was going on there? What kind of a team is that? Gaston, Evil Queen... Randall and the hunter from Bambi. Yep. What on earth could they be planning? I have no idea. I can't, I, I can't even imagine what they're trying to do. Fortunately, we've got all the best Disney villains, so we can come up with an epic plan. So, obviously, this is going to be focused around uh, attack from the ocean. Mm-hmm. So, with Davy Jones and Ursula essentially controlling the ocean, yep. they, uh, Ursula can create weather patterns like she, she can just create storms and tsunamis and like also and, and hurricanes and stuff like that mm-hmm. davy jones has the the kraken at his disposal yes the kraken yeah, yes if we can manage to get that kraken on land with ursula's help would also be well that's what i'm thinking because like you you've seen images of the kraken climbing aboard ships mm-hmm. so the kraken doesn't have to stay in the water we, yeah. it can get onto the land so, Ursula being able to create tidal waves, tsunamis, Ooh. hurricanes, all that sort of stuff yep. will increase the water level in areas and that Kraken can just climb onto the land and just start wreaking absolute havoc. And Davy Jones not being able to get on land, if the ocean area increases, he his area of uh, effect would also increase. Exactly. Oh, damn. What do you think of using Captain Hook as the opposing force? Like, so we have uh, Davy Jones and Ursula taking over the sea, and then we have Captain Hook, like, rounding the people up, acting as the good guy. But in fact, he's trying to uh, lead everyone into his pirate life and therefore t- taking over the world in that way. Yeah, no, I like that. Mm-hmm. And then at the same time, you've got Maleficent who, like her and Ursula both, like can, well, can Maleficent change into anything except the dragon? Oh, I don't know. I don't think she can. I think she's her and dragon. Yeah. So Ursula can become a human if she wants to. Mm-hmm. Vanessa, right? Vanessa. Like, Mm -hmm. she does show that she can turn into a human. So, once she's done her thing with the sea and getting that, she can become human to get on land and work with Captain Cook to start taking over. Mm -hmm. She can be, like, the pirate queen or something. Yeah. And then you've obviously got Maleficent, who can just absolutely just bro down and take over by force as well. Mm -hmm. So, she'll go dragon form and she... Like, we're, we're taking over the world by force. Yeah. We definitely are. We're not. This isn't some slow burn that's like taking. No, we're we're just full on outquitering this shit mm-hmm. and taking over the world. Yeah. Another like another look at this is if Ursula's like weather doesn't bring the ocean up high enough, then Maleficent and her dragon form can take over like the area up top. So like mountain ranges and things like that, uh, Maleficent can take care of, and then. Mm-hmm. Anywhere, like, lower sea level, like, sea level or, like, a bit above, uh, Ursula and Davy Jones would be able to take care of. Captain Hook as well. Maleficent is, like, a whole class of her own, so she can take care of things by herself. Yeah. Yeah. And the most important thing with Maleficent is that she is literally, she, like, in her dragon form, she is indestructible. Nothing mm-hmm. hurts her. Yes. Except for a sword. That magical sword. Yeah. It's yeah. only that magical weapon that can actually hurt her. Mm-hmm. And she's got, like, that acid fire breath of hers. Yeah. I'd say the flaws would be, like, Davy Jones can't get on water, so we're increasing the s- surface area that he can traverse. We're using Captain Hook's, you know, his ship and his crew on a f- larger area area because of the same reason and what they can't reach will covering with maleficent like it's still not much of a handicap but we have fought i think feel like we have fought things through and is it world domination yeah world domination so we just slowly take over the world mm-hmm. we one area at a time one country at a time yeah 
Yeah. Because I think the, the problem is going to be like, yeah, we can do that to attack like a city or something like that. But how mm-hmm. do we take over the whole world through this? How do we take it to the next step? Like, so what I was saying was um, Ursula and Davy Jones is basically this opposing force that the, uh, we're providing for people. And then near near the sea areas for people who want to still survive around those areas, we've got Captain Hook getting everyone together. Oh. And then they form like a pirate civilization led by Captain Hook. So you're saying that we're... He- they're actually pretending to work on the other team to fight back against the Kraken mm-hmm. and then get everybody together that way. Yeah, but they're still doing their thing. Like, you know, uh, Ursula would like would just turn back, turn into human when they're done and li- live among them and, you know, work politics that way. Davy Jones does, probably wouldn't mind just, you know, actually haunting people and hurting people. And then I say, like, I guess, like, people who escape into the mountains can, by saying Maleficent takes care of them, is, like, if they think Maleficent is, like, this all power powerful magical dragon that can't be killed then they they would treat her as you know a guardian or a god and a whole society would form around them in that way too so now we have like three different factions how do we bring that all together so the c is okay davy jones is okay just you know doing his thing so i don't think he minds like not being part of the like ruling party or anything like that i think if as long as you let him kill people and let him do his thing he doesn't care Mm -hmm. ursula can turn into human and use her powers to go up the ranks in politics and uh, in society. A Captain Hook is already leading the whole pirate civilization. And then we've got Maleficent, which is harder to work into like I get, in terms of like the sea meeting up with the mountains. Well, she can also like that she can be part of with um, Captain Cook and Ursula as part of the fight back. Oh yeah, yeah. she can just turn. So Davy Jones could be the catalyst. Mm-hmm. So him, him attacking land and then her as the sorceress and as the dragon mm-hmm. could be the like the beacon yeah so she could be the dragon and captain cook and ursula actually can control in air quotation marks mm-hmm. maleficent as the dragon to mm-hmm. fight back against the kraken not actually do any like damage to it mm-hmm. but enough to convince everybody that they helped to like sort of fight it away mm, okay to push davy jones and then davy jones goes back out to sea and lives his life and mm-hmm. sort of just like whatever he wants to do yeah and then the other three sort of now they've got the support of everybody yeah i'd say that's good what do you what do you think about that plan i think it's a good plan well is does maleficent stay as the dragon the whole way through i think so she doesn't have to stay as a dragon forever like she can yep. transform back but whenever she needs to be a dragon she can be a dragon mm-hmm. i guess once davy jones sort of goes back out to sea and does his thing she can always turn back into a human and the mountain people can come back down and live their lives down there and then you've sort of u- united all the people mm. so it's more like a take over the world sort of just like become the leader of the yeah, world yeah yeah by amassing a powerful army yeah and then like when things go south when people like start being shit again like davy jones comes back scares people back into into line yep and then they fight him off again yeah it's like a reverse king arthur story where the dragon is helping fight off the the scary monster yeah oh our plan's pretty straightforward i think simplicity wise we we we, we're doing pretty well oh Mm. damn we really actually managed to get all the people we had up top except gaston i know i couldn't believe it yeah i thought they i thought we were both gonna compare Pete for um, Maleficent. I know. Yeah. I'm really curious what they're doing. Yeah. Oh, God. I'm going to... I feel like they're going to surprise us. So what surprises do Emma and Nick have in store? There we go. All righty. So... <laughs> Honestly, I can't believe that worked how that worked. What <laughs> What just happened? <laughs> I don't even know. I, my, my heart was pounding. I was like, what is what is happening? I, should, I said I should have done some mock drafts with you because honestly, it does get like that. When you do your first ones, you're like, oh, fuck, like I'm on the clock. What do I need to do? <laughs> <laughs> and that's why at the last one, I was like, I'm glad that I like threw to you in the second one. So it wasn't going to be like a, oh, fuck, who do I pick for the fourth <laughs> <do> one? <laughs> But I feel like we got three from four that we wanted, but with number four, we weren't completely sold. So I guess for the recording, I mean, it's probably in the other one anyway, but we had Randall, Evil Queen, Gaston and Davy Jones. We got our top three, but we've just swapped out Davy Jones for the Hunter, which we're fine with. Because, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just just from yeah. Look, I think you know, it's 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 a tough play because we could have taken Davy three, knowing that they probably weren't going to take Gaston, but Gaston's more important to our plan. Yeah. So I think we just needed to t- 
take him at three. To be honest, I feel like I know I know Ken. <laughs> and I feel like for their fourth, they definitely would have tried to take Gaston. So who did they actually end up getting? I think so. They got... Maleficent. Yeah, Maleficent, Ursula, Hook. Yeah, and Davy. And Davy, so Davy and what Maleficent. What plan are you going to put together? They, they, they're gone nature. Yeah, they're definitely in the ocean, that's for sure. Well, Maleficent's got nothing to do with the ocean, but she's the queen of nature, basically. Hmm. Hmm. Fascinating. Hmm. I'm curious. I want to. I want to see what they come up with. That's that's got me interested. But I guess so. I don't know. And I think from the show notes, I don't think our plan has to out. Like we're just going to be rated on a score, so we're not attacking yeah. them, and we're not. Yeah. I guess trying to beat them. It's just right. how we would take over the world. Yeah. All right. Loose plan with these four. What have we got? And then we can drill down into the specifics of it. All right. You're, um, on, you're on this. I'm. I'm. <laughs> I'm you got on this. this. All right, so, we, I mean, we drafted Randall, Evil Queen, Gaston, Hunter, but we're going to start with Gaston, because I think he's kind of crucial to our plan here. <laughs> yep. So, 100%. Gaston is the face of our new political party. <laughs> Do we need a name <laughs> for our political party? I think we should. There's a creativity creativity element to this. I definitely, and a bit of a showmanship. Yeah, a bit of a showmanship. Uh... Well, we could just be the um, the DSB. <laughs> Disney Socialist Disney Party. Socialist party. <laughs> I love it. It's so DSB. good. DSP. Okay, cool. So Gaston is the face of the political party. Yep. Because he's pretty. He's got the biceps. He's got the smile. He's going to make everyone swoon. He's got it all. That's what we want. He's got I feel it like all. he'd even be able to turn the turn the straighties. I, I feel like you need to speak about Gaston because <laughs> I just don't think I can do justice to this for Diana. <laughs> Dion? Deanna. Deanna. I, I really struggle with that name. It's like Just call version, her D. It's Just version like one point seven of a name. Like Oh I know, that's the thing. There's so many different like Anyway, call yep. her D. It's fine. Her name's D. D's fine. Yeah. We can do D. So you're gonna sell Gaston and how pretty he is, you can talk about whatever you want. That's D's realm, but sure, we can do that. Maybe we just let her talk about it. Can we just like move her in? Just you know what? Maybe if we can get them involved, D, what do you love about Gaston? And then she'll say it and be like, you know what? That's what the rest of the world loves about him too. Yeah. Which is why Gaston is the new face <laughs> of the DSP, the Disney <laughs> Socialist Party. But- It'll be our intro. It'll be like, look, Gaston is really the key to everything, but we don't think we can do injustice. It's got to come from D, <laughs> his biggest fan. Tell us about why he's so pretty, why he's so perfect. Oh, man. All right. Okay. And that's the good thing. That's the showmanship. That's the showmanship. That's part of it. I think it's, the wa- it's the wow factor as well. It's it's the way we sell it. It's the way we sell it. We're definitely selling it. All right. Cool. So, <laughs> you know, everybody everybody loves Gaston, but I think we need to reach out to uh, number one fan. Yeah. And D, why do, why do you love Gaston so much? Exactly. Exactly. But the problem is not everybody loves the same thing. So, you're going to have natural haters, people that are standing up against Gaston going, oh, he's this and that or whatever so we need an opposing party the hunter yeah <laughs> the hunter is running against Gaston <laughs> <laughs> but what's his political party do we need a so this is all happening on the surface on the surface the world this is, is seeing this but I feel like for this are we st- like is it starting off in one country and then we're invading the rest of the world like how are we doing this because it's obviously world domination honestly at this point I want to start in America because our political opponents are going to be Trump Biden and Kanye West <laughs> so I really feel like chucking Gaston and the hunter up there is a Heaps <laughs> it's not. And then we slowly... Okay, right, all right. So we're starting with America. Okay. We're starting with America. We've got to. We're okay. It's just the most sane place to do it. All right, yeah. so I think that's that's good. So I can start off with the guest on, get D, get D riled up, get her into it, and then I can be like, and this is what people love about him, and this is why people would vote for him, and this is why we have picked Gaston as the face of our political party, the DSP. Yeah, then, and then you can jump in and be like, but on the flip side... Maybe we should just leave the hunter out till the end. All right. Just thinking about this. We'll, we'll speak through the Gaston thing. Okay. Okay. And then we'll be like, as that starts to get traction and we start winning people over, we'll introduce the hunter. <laughs> as his opposition. Honestly, we could just leave the hunter out of our mind completely. 100%. He's just in the background, just like he's shooting just people. Maybe he's just like a bloody sniper. He's a bodyguard. He's the bodyguard to Gaston. Oh, fucking hell. All right. Okay. So we've got Gaston. He is the face of our political party. Yeah. So what, what happens behind the scenes? So we've got, so he gets into office. We're going to assume people are going to vote for him. Well, yeah. I mean, people are going to vote for him. And I guess the, the good thing about America is the way that we 
split the political party. So what we're going to do is even if people aren't naturally voting for him, Randall's going to abduct his main opposition, mm-hmm. deliver them to the evil queen, Ooh. then have the evil queen <laughs> hypnotize them into yep. voting for Gaston or supporting Gaston, and then Randall's going to chuck them back in bed. And so they either step down or they start doing some really weird shit that like yep. people be like, "Oh, Gaston's the, the lesser of all the evils here." <laughs> Yeah, yeah, okay. 100%. Okay, so he takes them to that. Cool. I guess the evil queen, I think the the problem with this plan is it might be a bit slow. So the evil queen we know can cook food that can do shit to people. So surely mm-hmm. we can, like, get whole populations later on. Maybe that's, like, a later plan. So once we've taken over America, we need to take over entire countries or areas at a time. Yep. That's when she's just, like, batch cooking apples and dropping them in Ethiopia. 100%. Taking over. <laughs> um, all right. So we got Gaston. He's the face of the party. So he yep. essentially, I guess we're going to say that, yeah, so Randall abducts people so yep. that Evil Queen can... So then essentially we get Gaston into power. He's the president of the US. And from there, do you think there's a bit of a Randall can jump into um, the bedrooms of other high-powered, you know, military or, um, you know, presidents across the world and things like that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think it's going to be really important to it because it's like, if you can get the leadership of it, like if someone's been voted in or whatever, mm. like you can you can take over, you can try and take over the population one by one or in groups. But if you go straight to the head of the snake and you get that, yep. then it's going to make it a lot easier to get a, get over the line. Cool. I think everyone can just declare, yep, Gaston's the number one. Yeah. This entire thing is revolving around Gaston being the best in the world. <laughs> I know. 100%. But I think also, like, I mean, if you think about it, if people, you know, already feel like, like if you think the bloody Russians and they got their Putin and whatever, if mm. you then had Putin, like, you're so under his power, if you hit, then had him being like, this guy Gaston, like, he's even better than I am, you'd be like, whoa. Oh, what? okay. Like, do you know what I mean? So then you'd be like, yeah, yeah all right, I'll follow Gaston. He's better looking. <laughs> well, you wouldn't have a choice. You're still following Putin. Putin's following yeah, Gaston. So. <laughs> true. And maybe that's yeah. what it is, is that Putin, uh, the, um, that, like, Gaston is still, like, he's technically in control and this whole team behind the scenes is in control but everybody else still remains in power but we're yeah. actually controlling them. Yeah. And I think that's important to call out from the evil queen perspective as well. Because mm. she is like a, a leader. She can do flipping everything. And I guess like probably need to speak about her weakness a little bit. Because <laughs> we're going to have to talk about that. But she's used, she wants power. Like she actually, of this entire group, she's yep. probably the most in love with power. Well, besides her and Gaston. So it's kind of that balance of control between them. Yeah. But I guess the, the difference that I feel with the queen and Gaston is that Gaston wants to be known. Own, whereas oh, I feel like the really evil queen point. is, you know, she hides in the shadow. She's got her cloak, yeah. all that sort of thing. She's so she wants control. that power, but she's yeah. the actual, she wants the actual control. Whereas Gaston is happy as long as he has, and he's dumb, as long yeah. as he has the sense that he's in control and he's powerful and everybody loves him. I think he'll yeah. be fine. And the hunter, yeah, he's a fucking Trump supporter. So who knows what's going on there? <laughs> I'm, so what are we doing with the hunter? Is he just going to be the bodyguard to Gaston? I feel like we don't, we have Randall and the evil queen. We don't need an opposi- opposing party. I don't know. Is there weird rednecks that don't have TVs? Maybe he can walk around and like spread the news of Gaston's <laughs> he just be rednecks. Just a door to door messenger. Yes. <laughs> Do you want to hear about our Lord and Savior Gaston? <laughs> Yeah, 100%. That sounds like a Uh, fantastic use of his skills. But essentially, I think the overall thing is that Gaston is the face of the political party. Randall abducts the other candidates. Yeah, high power candidates. Yeah. And so then that way we get Gaston into power as the president of the United States. Yeah. And then effectively, eventually the president of the world. (laughs) And then eventually the president of the world. Because, yeah. So after he's president, he's obviously then builds relationships with the other people. Everybody loves him. But also Randall still goes into the the bedrooms of the other high-powered people in the world like Putin and those types of guys gets them on side they all love Gaston which turns their people which makes it a quicker process in terms of rather than trying to mind control you know person by person you get the high-powered ones the the issue with the the handicap and the flaws in the team so Gaston we said he just wants to be the face he just wants to be seen as important whereas the queen actually wants the power so she'll be fine behind the scenes the hunter whatever and Randall um, he just wants to be part of something (laughs) yeah well actually the evil queen has one other flaw that they might call us on Mm -hmm. and that's that she hates pretty women (laughs) oh yeah so i mean if we just let her kill any pretty women that randall drops off at the door then i think we'll be okay (laughs) (laughs) yeah i guess if it gets brought up she'd be like well look 
you know, <laughs> whatever. We did oh, look at least there's evidence that we spoke about it. <laughs> She's just killing. We're just gonna let the killer to kill. Her. I, th- I think so. And if bloody Gaston brings <laughs> him home, she'll allow. I think that she would allow one to be the face of it because if it meant that she had all the power behind the scenes, but then like all these concubines <laughs> should just kill yeah. them. <laughs> I think it's as long as they're not more pretty than she is. Mm. So we should be okay with that. I mean, there was only one in existence. Okay, so I guess in terms of. That so that's the overall thing. The hunter is going to be used as a da- door-to-door salesman for all those rednecks that don't have TVs. <laughs> yeah. Do we need more than that? What do you think? Like in terms of a world domination? I, I mean, we, that how does that not take over the world? We're hypnotizing people and taking over the world. And eventually, we get those in power once everybody in the world starts to like. So, if we're using Putin as an example, once everybody in Russia starts to love Gaston more than Putin, which probably wouldn't be hard. Yeah. We get Putin to be like, you know what? You can do it. Let's change the the laws so that um, he can be in control and you know main country and continent by continent Gaston takes yeah. over yeah absolutely cool and I feel like the evil queen once she's got power she can do whatever the fuck she wants we're just creating the Star Wars actually we're creating the Disney Empire let's be real Disney already is already doing I this I feel like yeah so I guess if we're <laughs> asked what the overall plan is the overall plan is that Gaston just wants everybody to love him and the evil queen just wants power and she's going to have power if she's behind Gaston running him yeah and then all the actual leaders of the world just report into us okay thanks bye I think I think we drafted really well. We drafted the flaws out of the team, frankly. I feel like because there's no, like Gaston's got no other men to fight with. And the only thing that could potentially be is if Gaston gets too big of a head and wants to overpower the queen. But at the same time, I assume she's been like slowly poisoning him or something. <laughs> He's also dumb as bricks. Yeah. So I think we'll be okay. Yeah. I feel like I'm good with that. I feel like it'll be a 100% on the fly thing, which is what most of my plans are. <laughs> it's more like I have like an idea and then I just fucking wing it and just see and then when they ask questions I'm like yeah this is actually what I meant yeah we'll talk it out we'll be right yeah the two of us have been bullshitting for years we'll be okay 100% let's win this done see you in there so you know who they've picked and you've heard their plans join us again same time same place next week for the pitches and the thrilling conclusion thanks for listening to World Domination You can find links to all the things we talked about, our other episodes, our social media handles, and our contact information at anchor.fm slash worlddomination. If you want to tell us something, feel free to get in touch. And remember, if you like the show, make sure to tell your mum about it.